All right, I got a blast from the past. I got a Hurst Super Shifter 3 with the little red handle. And the little red handle was a little lockout mechanism for reverse. You pushed it down and uh, you, you were able to get reverse and then pull it out and reverse was locked out so that you didn't have any chance at all of engaging reverse when you were you know, doing your street racing or drag racing. I, I remember I had one of these in a uh, 67 big block 427 Chevelle. I used to street race with a friend of mine and I used to love just the whole look. It, it really meant if somebody looked in your car, it meant that you, know, you meant business. It, it meant that you were really serious about what you were doing. These super shifters were mounted pretty high on the transmissions with straight rods. And so as a result, you had to cut your floor up to put them in. And that car didn't have any interior in it anyway, so it didn't really matter. But I just wanted to go through the shifter. It came to me in pieces. I wanted to show you how it works internally and you know, what you need to do to put it back together again. Please watch my two other videos on rebuilding her shifters if you haven't already. It shows you how you can make your own tool of assemblies relatively quick. And the 3D printed files, very important, are in the description, the links to the files for the 3D printing that you can download yourself. And if you know somebody with 3D printer, make your own assembly jig for a shifter free of charge. Okay, it's pretty cool. So let's get to it. All right, so I got this shifter all apart comes apart pretty much the same way the other shifters I've taken apart on previous videos. So I would suggest you watch those videos. I'm not going to bore you with another disassembly. But I wanted to show you a few things on how this shifter works. It's very simple. Normally, when we have our reverse gate plunger in here that goes like this, okay? It goes back and forth and there's a plunger that activates that down here. You'll see that in my other videos. And so let's just put this in here like this so you get a better idea. So this plunger is here like this. This goes like that. It goes into reverse. As you can see the way it moves, the action there is what your reverse detent action is. If you notice, it lifts it up. And that's why it's shaped like this. Part of the, the patent, actually, the Hearst patent is this actual motion of it just doing this, going up this way. And the spring pressure forces it back like that. So that's the, that's the whole pattern of the Hearst shifter. All right, so let me show you how this mechanism works for the Hearst Super Shifter 3. When the pull-up mechanism is in the up position, it blocks the plunger from going into the reverse gate. If I push the mechanism down like this, line up my gates, the plunger will go into the reverse gate then. So simply put, you can see it drops right in up, it blocks it from going in. It's more of a positive lockout, I guess, if you need that, if you're afraid of accidentally pulling a whole shot in reverse. So that's what it does, very simple. Boom, boom. That's all it does. But this mechanism has to be held in the up position. And it's held in the up position by this little tab over here. You see this little tab, it's different from the other side. And the tab goes against a little spring plate that's riveted to the inside of the case. So that spring plate here keeps the tab kind of loaded so that once you override it, you push it down, you pull it up, it kind of locks it in place there. See, that's what it does. Now, the rivets on these get loose. I tighten up one of these and I'm going to tighten up the other by just putting it on my bench, on my, you know, my vise there and just tightening the rivets up. Same thing inside of this over here. I'm going to tighten this up too so it isn't flopping around. And then what I'm going to do is go through everything and put it back together like a regular complex shifter. But that's pretty much how it works. So some of the things I like doing are I'll take a stone and I'll go over everything. I, I buy these stones from Harbor Freight. They're fairly easy. They have a coarse side and a fine side to it. And I'll just go like this and kind of smooth these pieces up, make sure there's no burrs on them, clean them up. This is a good carry. There's no reason not to reuse it again. But I'm going to just go over everything and kind of clean it up a little bit. Make sure there's no burrs. I'll do the same thing with the inside of the body. I might take a file first. I'll go in it like this. Just clean it up. Make sure, again, there's no burrs and no nicks. Make sure it looks really good inside. Take out all of the high spots. For maybe people banging on it with hammers or whatever. Just clean it up like that. Same thing with the gates. What I'll do is I'll hit them with a file. And what I'll do is I'm going to deburr all the edges with my rotary tool and clean these little high spots up on these edges here. All right, so we're going to do that, clean that all up, and then put it back together. It's very obvious that the spring plate is worn. 
You can see this is the old plate, this is a new plate. There's a little bit of a difference, this flattened out. So really just gonna change some shim plates, some springs on this thing, and get it back together for the guy. All right, so I want to tighten these rivets. I'm going to put this side down and actually use a big punch on the head of the rivet and punch it down. The same thing with this one. Oh, it's nice and nice and tight now. Let's go look at the one inside here. The same thing. Let's see if we can get it right on there. It's good. Kind of line this up. It's got a little a little pin to hold it in place, but what we want to do is just kind of get this thing a little bit tighter so it doesn't flop around as much. Excellent. So I've got the mechanism all together. You've seen me do this a few times in some other videos. If not, please watch my other Hearst videos and they'll show you how I put these together with a jig that you can make yourself. The details and drawings are online for free and you can 3D print your own jig. So we're going to start with the thin plate. Notice the orientation of the plate. We're going to put down the reverse gate. Kind of greased everything already. Today I'm using that Lucas uh, red and tacky grease. It works really good for sliding parts, I've been told. So we're going to try it out. Looks really good. Put that on there. Put some more grease. On like this. Can never go. There we go. Like that. Now, we're going to put the lockout mechanism in. And the lockout mechanism, you've got the reinforced side facing up towards you. I'm going to put some grease on it again. On the back side, where it's going to slide. Lay it down in here. Now, we need to hold this up with something. So I'm going to use a, a socket, I think about here. It's always good to have a selection of sockets or something that you could use to hold things up. It's good like that. Now we've got our 1-2 gate. Put this on. And notice the way, again, this is notched out to fit in here. This end faces towards the mechanism. That's beautiful, huh? Same thing, let's put this on top here. I just love using this grease, put it all over everything. Never have enough grease. And this one faces out. This. You see when we have it all again, the stack lined up correctly, everything kind of lines up with this. So the stack is perfect. Now there's the wave washer. If you look at the wave washer, I put it where these two holes are facing that way. It's the way they have them from the factory, just like this. And we're going to put it inside the body. This may be a little tricky now, okay, because of the weight of everything. So I'm going to do our best to get it all in and get it started in here. Now I'm going to just take this out for a second here and just do it like that and 
slide that plate in later. It's a lot easier to get that in later on. I can even go in from the top if I want. This just don't cut your fingers. All right, so what I like to do is I like to get this kind of started somewhat in here. I have to leave it out to get the back plate on, but I like to get it somewhat started. Make sure it's okay, all right? Because I have to, you really don't want to have this in here when you're putting the back plate in. It makes it harder to get the rear plate in. Okay, so now that's all aligned, I'm gonna go put the alignment tool back in here and then put the bridge plate back in place. And we gotta get the nylon washer, put that back in here like that. Just like that. What I like to do is I like to get these bridge plates kind of snug before I make sure to align properly. I don't want to start bending the plate. What I'm trying to do is I'm going to bend this and so I can catch the, the bridge plate. All right. And if you over tighten this bridge plate, what's going to happen is the unit is not going to move back and forth like this easy. So you just really want to have it snug. You don't want to make it too tight where you're going to bend the plate, which happened on the other unit. If you bend the plate, you end up destroying the washers inside of behind it. So, so now I'm getting a little bit tight. That's it. I forgot something. The guy didn't give me any bolts with his unit. And you really want to put the bolts in this thing because this mechanism is in the way before you put it together. So I'm going to drop the bolts in here before I put everything together. So that's going to make life a lot easier. Because once this thing is in, it's impossible to get the lower bolt in. You can get the upper bolt in but you can't get the lower bolt in. So I'm gonna just put the stiffener plate in here right now. He didn't supply this stuff with it, but I got a feeling he's gonna need it, you know? Yeah, it's a lot easier. go. Let's go put the stops in this thing. I do recall it was very difficult getting that stick in place. That's the only drawback to the shifter. Oh. Now what I do on these bodies is I'm going to Put some wire ties in here um, to kind of hold everything in place. But it looks good. Okay, I think that rebuild came out pretty good. Last thing I have to do on this guy's uh, setup here is replace his welded arms. You can see that they were welded. 
I think they welded them to get this kind of angle and you can get solid arms that have that angle, all right? So there's no reason to do that. So we're gonna hook him up with some good solid arms, take care of his problem, and that's it. The uh, Super Shifter 3 rebuild with the red handle came out really nice. I really wanted just to do this video to show you the differences internally, what these are about, because you don't really get to see these that much. I think it's a pretty cool looking piece. It's very nostalgic looking, you know. I love them, I think they're very cool. And, uh, but you can also, by the way, because of the, the base mechanism over here is the same as a standard competition plus shifter. In fact, you could put this in your car in place of your comp plus shifter. The problem is this little piece over here may get in the way of your console. So if you don't have a console, you can, in fact, probably put this in a car with a conventional Hearst boot and just, they did make a boot, I believe at one time that had an extra like opening for this little red handle thing here. So it came out pretty good. I'm really happy with it. Now, I did do three other videos for her shifters. I did a video that was basic cleaning of the shifter without going into the internal mechanism. And I did two other videos on full rebuilds. In those videos, I used an assembly jig that I designed for them. And the files for this jig, these are CAD files are available right here in the description below, okay? So you can take those files and they're designed and optimized for 3D printing. So if you know somebody with a 3D printer, you could 3D print your own assembly jig for her shifter for free. The files I'm giving you for free, the links are below for free. And all I ask you to do is that if you do use them, send me some pictures on my Instagram, which is at Instagram slash five speeds, okay? Send me some pictures of what you've done. A lot of people have in the past and it looks awesome and it's worked. So I think that's really cool. Also, if you make improvements to the files, let me know. Send me some improvements and we can share all this stuff and build some really great tools together. I think we're at a time in technology that we can actually do this. It's, it's awesome. So that's it. Thanks for watching. See you soon.